What's up guys, Zio here with the NES Season 4 Draft Recap. Um, if you guys missed our live draft, um, I'm gonna try to download it and re-upload it because it was an awesome draft stream where we had, I believe, seven or eight coaches just on kind of talking as we were all live drafting our teams and it was a lot of fun. Um, but we just finished that up, so I figured while it was fresh on my mind, I might as well do my draft recap. Um, so heading into the NES Season 4, um, I didn't actually really think I wanted to franchise tag anything from last season. Um, I realized that I had a lot of stuff that I kind of liked, but didn't really feel super comfortable with. Uh, but then when I was doing the NES Season 3 um, postseason awards, I guess, um, I wrote up a case for Tapu Fini and like, how well I used it last season, um, and realized that it was pretty important to bring back, so I ended up franchise tagging it for the cost of 40 free agent points. Um, hopefully I have a graphic up somewhere over here. Uh, but basically what that means is, heading into the draft, I knew I already had Tapu Fini as my tier 1, but instead of having 400 free points to have my last four free agent picks from, I had then had 360, um, which basically meant that I could pick stuff, but I would have to be pretty careful, and there's no way I can really take a tier, or multiple tier 2s, or tier 1s, without having to take a lower tier mega. Um, so I probably put more work into this draft than I've ever put into a draft before, um, at least in terms of like trying to get stuff that like complemented each other well, as well as had like good backups for everything. Um, one of the few things that I wanted <laughs> from Top of Finney, because it is a water type and a fairy type, um, I wanted to be able to have both cores and kind of have Top of Finney as the base for both. Um, it already has pretty nice bulk and surprisingly nice special attack and speed for when you need it to be a little bit more offensive or speedy, um, but I kind of wanted stuff that could hit hard around it and then just kind of be able to pivot whenever I needed to into Top of Finney. Um, I actually don't really have as much pivoting, quote unquote, as I normally do, but there's enough in here that I should still be able to pivot into my walls and stuff. Um, but I noticed in tier or round one of most drafts, um, I tend to kind of have a hard time figuring out what I want to do because there are so many different directions I can go. Um, originally when I was going into this draft, I was going to take a tier 3 in the very beginning of the draft and I actually really wanted Arcanine. Um, and that was going to be my plan until about like a day before the draft. <laughs> and then I ended up changing it and getting the second half of the core that I really wanted with Tapu Fini, Arcanine, and Kartana and just picking up Kartana round 1. Um, I ended up asking people after the draft, and it turns out that nobody was actually really interested in Kartana, so I probably could have waited a much longer time to pick it up if I wanted to. Uh, but from what I've seen in other leagues, Kartana normally goes pretty fast, because it's kind of one of the premier sweepers in OU right now. Um, Grass Steel's kind of a weird offensive typing, but it ends up pairing well with Tapu Fini, who ends up resisting all the HP fires that people are going to just try to put on everything. Um, and it got a little bit better uh, coverage in this generation with getting knockoff instead of night slash um, so basically for the cost of five base power whenever they don't have an item um, i'm able to hit a lot harder with knockoff um, until then and then i think kartana actually works a little bit better in leagues than it does outside of leagues um, if only because you're able to kind of mix it up between leaf blade smart strike psycho cut knockoff Brick Break, Sacred Sword, uh, basically whatever, like, Kartana has enough coverage that you can kind of hit whatever you really need to. Um, it's not like the most immediately awesome coverage, but it is um, effective enough to normally get what I need to get out of it. Um, unless I get Vacuum Wave if I want to go special and get priority for some reason, but base 60, not even, so probably not. Um, but when I was building my draft board, I realized that there was not really a Pokemon that could do what Kartana could do. Um, and I really wanted, with my first picks, to kind of just have very good offense and then get bulky offense throughout the rest of the draft. Um, so I could basically have a couple of things that are just designated, yes, these are my hard hitters, <laughs> try to deal with them basically. And then as they start to get worn down, I have other bulky offense to either wear down or clean up later in the game. Um, so I figured Kartana was a pretty interesting first round pick, even if it's not the most typical one. Um, a lot of steel types actually ended up going in round one. Um, I think there were like three or four that went before me. Um, 
I would have also been willing to take Age of Slash if HBK didn't take it, because um, I had built a couple of test teams around it. Um, Age of Slash is unbanned for Season 4, but it's at the cost of not being able to run King Shield. Um, so it's kind of an experiment, actually, because I don't really know if I've ever seen King Shieldless Age of Slash in leagues. Um, but since it doesn't actually regain its shield form with Protect or anything, um, it seems like it's a little bit more limited. Um, so we unbanned it this season. Um, it didn't fall to me, so whatever. I got the other steel that I wanted. <laughs> and base 109 speed is actually pretty nice, because um, with a Choice Scarf and max speed, I end up speeding um, a lot of things that are kind of randomly throughout the 100 tier. Um, even including stuff like Terrakion and Keldeo and Frizion. Um, I think all of them but Terrakion got drafted, so that'd be nice. Um, next up is a Pokemon that I had zero intention on drafting heading into the draft, and then when I saw it it's still being there... Okay, so not zero intention. I had the plan of drafting this if it was in round two still, um, but I was fully expecting a run on Mega Pokemon early and then not being able to get the thing that I wanted. Turns out that there was only one Mega Pokemon taken before my second round pick, which is kind of ridiculous because I was... I think my second round pick was like 27th or something like that overall. I don't really remember the math exactly, but um, basically only one Mega Pokemon had been taken before me and it wasn't really a Pokemon I wanted anyway. Um, so I ended up taking Mega Alakazam even though I hadn't really practiced a ton with it. Um, Trace is a super nice ability that actually only it and Mega Gardevoir really, or regular Gardevoir get in leagues. Um, and Alkazam has insane special coverage that kind of allows me to pretty much hit everything that Kartana wouldn't really want to hit or Tabu Fenny wouldn't really want to hit. Um, base 175 special attack is stupid <laughs> and basically pairs very nicely with my base 181 attack to kind of give me two things that are very designated to what they're supposed to do but they do it really well so it doesn't really matter <laughs> like obviously people are going to prep for special alakazam and physical kartana but a lot of teams don't really have the pressure to be able to do both um because a lot of the times they'll either want to skew towards being able to wall make alakazam or skew towards being able to wall kartana a lot of the times they're not really going to be able to do both as well as they would want to so i think both are going to be able to shine pretty well um Obviously they're both also frail, so I'll have to be careful with pivoting around stuff, but the rest of the team's kind of built to uh, support that, I guess. Um, next up is another Pokemon that I've never actually really used before, um, but I'm just going to keep trying to use stuff that I haven't used, I guess, and pick up a Alolan Muck. Um, Alolan Muck is actually tier 2 in our league, so it's a little bit pricier than I would have cared for. Um, but basically every time I've seen this thing in leagues, it does more than the other coach expects it to. Um, it's only weak to ground, which I'll end up having a couple of different answers to throughout the draft, so I'm not really tripping about it too much. Um, Poison Touch and Gluttony are both really useful abilities, especially with the, um... I forget what they're actually, the pinch berries, whatever they're called, but basically the berries that end up giving you half health when you're a quarter health or less, like an Aguav berry. Um, the ones that don't really kick in until normally you're almost dead, uh, Gluttony makes it so they kick in a half health instead, so you basically just heal up to full. Um, poison Dark is really nice typing, um, as well as being a grounded poison type, I don't have to worry about toxic spikes. Um, it's kind of something I didn't really mention when I was talking about Tapu Fini, but I also kind of wanted to build a team that actually like used Misty Terrain kind of well. Um, I noticed last season that um, I needed Pokemon that could take advantage of the fact that they wouldn't be statused. Um, so in a way, Muk kind of goes counter to that because Poison Touch obviously isn't really going to work if I'm under Misty Terrain. Um, but it's also going to help me because I don't have to worry about things getting paralyzed or burned or anything like that. Um, that otherwise people might want to try to paralyze or burn. Um, and I mean, honestly, I'm probably going to use Gluttony more often than I'm going to use Poison Touch anyway. I'll use both, but I'll probably prefer Gluttony just because berries are kind of nice in uh, League format. <laughs> um, and with base 105 HP as well as like fairly decent defenses and spit F, uh, it makes for a good assault vest user as well. Um, so it ends up being pretty bulky. Um, it doesn't get toxic spikes, but that's okay because I have other stuff that it does. Um, but I kind of actually did think it got that, but that's okay. Um, overall, um, I kind of wanted to use stuff that had like difficult typings to prepare for. 
Um, Water Fairy is a very good defensive typing. Grass Steel is a really good offensive typing if you can play around Fire, which I have switch-ins for, so it's whatever. Uh, Pure Psychic is pretty hard to switch into, especially with Tapu Fini resisting everything that Alakazam is weak to. Um, and then there's like one ground weakness right here, um, which I immediately end up patching with the next pick in Flygon. Um, I didn't actually want to take a Levitating Dragon because I kind of wanted to actually take advantage of the fact that Misty Terrain has damage taken from ground type attack or from dragon type attacks. Um, and I actually have a ground dragon that was grounded, uh, but I also needed a ground type because I didn't actually have one at this point in the draft. Um, and I was tempted to take Crocodile with the Muck pick and not have a grounded poison type for this draft. Um, but I realized that Flygon ended up doing everything that I wanted Crocodile to do, and then Muck gave me a little bit more flexibility there. Um, so Flygon gives me my first stealth rocker of the team. Um, it also gives me a special attacker, which I didn't really like. I had Alakazam, but if I didn't want to bring Alakazam, um, my best thing until then was Finny. Um, but Specs Boom Burst ends up hurting a lot because this thing still has 80, even though it's not like <laughs> it's not stab or anything. But base 140 uh, special type move with pretty decent uh, special offense ends up hitting hard anyway. Um, and then this generation, if you didn't know, in Gen 7, it also gets Dragon Dance. Um, so I can set up to be physical and just use like Dragonium Z sets or something like that. Um, it also gets um, some elemental punches, it looks like. It doesn't get ice punch, but it gets thunder punch and fire punch. Um, so overall, it's a Pokemon that I kind of wanted to use a lot. Um, it ended up actually sweeping me and <laughs> ending my uh, PU Battleground Championship, so I kind of wanted to pick it up because... I don't know, I needed a ground type, I needed a dragon type, and I couldn't afford Zygarde 10 anymore because um, I'd already taken my tier 2. So I just want to flag on. Um, next up, I wanted an electric type switch in, um, as well as I wanted to get my tier 5 just out of the way. Um, I felt pretty comfortable with going into tier 5 for a lot of stuff if I needed to. Um, and actually, after I drafted um, Kartana and Mega Alakazam, I did my math wrong initially and thought that I had to take um, a total of four tier fives in the draft. So I kind of wanted to just take my tier five and then worry about the other tier fives later. Um, turns out that I was actually able to take tier fours through the rest of the draft instead of just tier fives. Um, so that severely changed things a little bit after I got my tier five. Um, but I'm pretty happy with Electivire because Motor Drive gives me an electric immunity, um, which I kind of needed in addition to Flygon. Um, its base offenses are actually pretty good. The only thing that really holds it back a lot of the time is 95 speed, which if you slap a Choice Scarf on it still wasn't really that bad. Um, and it has really good mixed offenses, like um, Electivire makes for a really good mixed attacker, which I didn't really have at this point. Um, a lot of my offense was either special or physical, um, so for Flygon and Electivire, I kind of wanted to mix it up and get things that could run either way. Um, and I think Electivire is going to be kind of nice. Uh, it had a case this season to move up to Tier 4 um, and ended up staying in Tier 5, um, so I figured I might as well try it out, because <laughs> if it's a borderline Tier 4, then that probably means it's pretty good. Um, so next up, I wanted to kind of go on my run of tier fours because I hadn't taken one yet, but I realized that I needed four of them. Um, luckily, from the PU Battleground, I actually had experience with kind of a lot of stuff that I wanted to try out. Um, and first up, I realized I needed a fighting type. Um, I didn't have one yet, and I kind of like having them. Um, I originally, when I was going into this draft with Tapu Fini, kind of planned for Halucha a lot of the time. Um, but I obviously couldn't afford that since I took Muck with my uh, tier 2. So I kind of went with like a budget Halucha, I guess, and went with Hitmonlee. Um, the reason I say budget Halucha is because Hitmonlee gets Unburden, which is an ability that basically doubles speed on item loss. Uh, I played around with Unburden a little bit in the PU Battleground with Slurpuff and absolutely loved it. Uh, Slurpuff didn't really fit this team, but Hitmonlee kind of does. Um, because with Misty Seeds um, from Misty Surge, um, it's an item that basically activates the second I switch into Misty Terrain. Gives me a plus one Spadef, which Hitmonlee actually kind of appreciates because it has pretty good Spadef anyway. Um, and then doubles my speed instantly and allows me to kind of clean up with just high jump kicks and poison jabs and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> it also does get some priority in Bullet Punch, which is nice because I didn't actually really have priority until then. Um, as well as Fake Out Spam. Um, 
honestly, I've never actually used Hitmonlee before. Uh, I normally prefer Hitmontop if I get stuff, but I kind of realized that I wanted a little bit more offense um, rather than just trying to get like another bulky kind of slow thing, I guess. Um, and I've seen like on the ladder and stuff, there's Hollychas everywhere. <laughs> um, tried to pair it with like a Tapu Koko Hollycha thing. Uh, so Tapu Fini Hitmonlee is sort of like that, I guess. Um, it ends up actually helping Tapu Fini a little bit more because um, I get to switch, or I have an offensive switch into steel types that I didn't really have before, um, except for Flygon, I guess. Um, and I didn't really have anything on the team that was weak to Psychic at this point. Um, my flying resist is Kartana, which doesn't really work if it's special, but that's okay. Um, I can switch into fly flying type stuff later. Um, so next up, I needed a ghost type, um, and Miss Magius got swooped before um, I was there, which is okay. Um, like I wanted Miss Magius because it did well for me in the PU battleground, uh, but I've also used Cofagrius fairly well. Uh, I don't season two, I think I drafted it. Um, I wasn't really intending on drafting anything I've already drafted before, um, but I realized I wanted a little bit more physical bulk, um, as well as something that can kind of just be a wall if I need it to. Um, it gives me my first Toxic Spikes user if I want to use Toxic Spikes. It gives me a Trick Room switch in, which I kind of needed, um, and it gives me another... Um, it gives me basically a ghost type with the utility of ghost types, which is kind of important to me. Um, I like being able to willow wisp stuff outside of misty terrain. I like being able to actually like heat spam shadow ball if <laughs> I want to, I guess. Um, so overall, I'm pretty excited to bring back Factor Gis. Um and Mummy. I guess since I haven't even talked about it, Mummy is a pretty cool, unique ability that allows me to kind of play around with stuff a little bit more. Um, it basically like on contact it removes the pokemon who comes into contact with its ability um and it can spread so like if something takes mummy from me and then i hit that pokemon that has mummy i get mummy also um so it can end up leading for a couple of uh fun mind games i guess um and overall i kind of just needed a ghost type at this point um i was kind of trying to spam all my tier fours now and just get them out of the way um it seems like it ended up working out fairly well uh, next up, I wanted one more, like, completely dedicated wall, because I only really had Cofagrigus at this point, and while I like having Tapu Fini defensive, um, it's nice to kind of have another option there in case I want an offensive Tapu Fini, but also need walls. <laughs> um, so I ended up picking up uh, HBK and Shuckle. Um, Bug Rock actually fit this team perfectly, because up until this point I did not have anything that it was weak to, and water... Um, steel and ice? I forget what the other thing that's weak to. Um, but either, that's not ice, but it's something. Um, but basically, Shuckle has no offenses whatsoever with having awesome defenses, um, as well as a fair amount of utility, actually. Um, it also gets Sticky Web, which is kind of cool because I have a lot of things on my team that you kind of have to have Scarves to outspeed a lot of the time. Um, and if I end up deciding to use Sticky Web, then you end up just kind of getting screwed over by it and not being able to outspeed them anyway. Um, Shuckle was pretty hard for me to prepare for in the PU Battleground because it can do kind of a lot of things. Um, even if it's not offensive in any way, shape, or form, like you still have to prepare for it a lot of the time or you're just going to get walled and swept, <laughs> uh, which is kind of scary. Um, so I think Shuckle is going to be pretty fun. Um, I've never used it before, um, but I've seen it used enough at this point that I kind of know some things to do with it, and I think it'll be fun to show off. Um, yeah, here's Shuckle. <laughs> Contrary is a cool ability also, as well as Sturdy, even though a lot of the time you're never, ever, ever going to need Sturdy. Um, and it's another thing with Gluttony, which is kind of cool if I need a Berry, which is um, fairly common with something as bulky as Shuckle. Um, and... Heading into round nine, um, so the second to last round of the draft for us because we franchised Tapu Fini, um, I realized that I needed a fire type still and it had to be from tier four or tier three. Um, I was very, very, very tempted to pick up Darmanitan from tier three, but I realized I already kind of had a lot of physical offense um, and I kind of wanted something that could afford to go a little bit more mixed if I needed it to. Um, 
Bla I didn't bring Blaziken all the time in the PU Battleground. Oh, and by the way, Blaziken is locked to Blaze. I cannot use Speed Boost. Um, I didn't bring Blaziken all the time in the PU Battleground, but it is something that was kind of always hard for my opponents to prep for. Um, even if it was just Choice Scarfed a lot of the time, which it actually doesn't have to be now that I have Sticky Web. Um, so I can actually afford to run like Z moves or items on it and stuff. Um, but Blaziken's coverage is actually like surprisingly awesome um, for being a tier 4 like firefighting type. Um, firefighting's pretty hard offense to switch into because even outside of Misty Terrain, um, you can't uh, will a wisp it, obviously, because I'm a fire type. Um, so it'll be kind of nice to be able to see what this thing can do um, in a regular league because I liked it in the PU Battleground, but that was also like tier three and below stuff. So I got to be kind of careful about how often I bring it this season, but I think it can do a decent amount. Um, I mostly drafted it for its coverage, um, but it does also get defog this generation if I need a Pokemon on my team who's neutral to defog or neutral to rocks to remove hazards. Um, and I actually have one two, three, four defoggers, and a rapid spinner. Um, so I'm not really too worried about hazards this season, especially since only Shuckle until this point is even like weak to rocks. Um, and I already have a grounded poison type to suck up uh, toxic spikes. So <laughs> hazards aren't really too worried some for me. Um, I figured that would kind of be the case with how many new defoggers there are this generation, but I think Blaziken is the only, or up until this point, Blaziken's the only one that I took that actually was new. Um, so with the final pick in the draft, um, I realized I needed a little bit more special offense. Um, I realized I could stand to use a little bit more speed if I wanted to, um, just so Cartana isn't um, naturally the fastest like regular thing on my team. Because Alex Sam's base 150, and everyone's going to run a choice scarf to try to outspeed it or whatever, so a lot of the time they're also going to outrun Cartana unless I have a choice scarf. Um, so I wanted something else for coaches to prepare for around that speed tier. Um, and I realized Tornadus uh, Incarnate was still around. This is, yeah, Incarnate. Um, so I realized Tornadus Incarnate was still around in tier 3. Um, it gives me a base 111 speed tier, which allows me to outspeed the base 110s that Cartana doesn't outspeed naturally. Um, as well as just being allowed me to, or allowing me to uh, use Prankster for a couple of different moves. Um, I kind of want to keep stuff secret for what I want to do for this because I do have a lot of things in mind for this. Um, it's another Pokemon that I think probably should have been moved up from the tier that it's in because I think tier 3 is a little too low for what it can do, um, especially now that it gets Prankster Defog. Um, as well as actually being able to use Defiant sets a lot. Um, if you don't know Defiance, an ability that I actually kind of wanted heading into the draft, where attack is raised by two for each of its stats that's lowered. Um, so either, like, if I switch into an Intimidate, I get minus one, but then get plus two attack. So Intimidate actually gives me attack instead of taking it away. Or if someone's trying to defog away my hazards, they lower my evasiveness, but then give me plus two attack, which allows me to be a little bit, uh, play a little bit of mind games with that too, as well as try to prevent hazards a bit. Um, and then Tornadus can actually kind of do a lot. Like it's kind of um, slept on, in my opinion, as one of the, like it's kind of clearly like the worst quote unquote genie, um, but it's still a genie and genies are still really good. So even though it has 70, 70, 80 offense or bulk, um, it's offenses overall kind of make it a nice uh, pivot, uh, fast pivot for me more importantly, uh, and allow me to switch into some of my bulkier stuff. Um, so yeah, this is the squad. Um, I'm pretty excited about it, honestly. Um, I put a lot of prep into this draft and it kind of went all out the window after I drafted Mega Alakazam. Um, but I think this team's gonna be pretty hard to plan for. Um, there's not really a lot of shared weaknesses. There's not really a lot of shared speed tiers. In fact, every speed tier on my team is different, which is kind of cool. Um, so coaches have to basically plan when they're speed creeping to creep very specific things, um, which allows me to play a little bit more with my EVs. Um, Cartana is the only thing that I kind of wish I maybe would have waited a little bit longer on taking, but in my opinion, it is a first round pick. I'm going to show it off this season, hopefully, and get a couple of sweeps with it because the second this thing gets a beast boost, it's so hard to switch into. Um, 
and I think I like already expect a lot of coaches to bring HP Fire to try to bring it down. But I have Tapu Fini to switch into that. I have Alakazam's like actually pretty decent Spit F to switch into it. Muck's not really going to care about an HP Fire. Flygon resists it. Um, Blaziken doesn't care either. Um, so really, I'm not like tripping about HP Fire. Um, I made a team that wasn't really weak to fire outside of uh, Kartana at all. <laughs> so I'm not really worried about it. And overall, um, I'm actually pretty excited for this team. Um, normally when I draft a team, um, I end up kind of immediately thinking of like a weakness or two that I have that I didn't really think of during the draft. Um, but I think my prep this time actually helps me construct an overall pretty solid roster. Um, and I think this prep will actually help me construct a roster around Tapu Fini, which is something that I really wanted. Um, I've never really had, like when I franchise tag stuff, I kind of just leave it on the team and then don't really effectively build around it. Um, but I think I'll be able to show off even a couple uh, more offensive sets with Tapu Fini this season. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty excited. So if there's anything you guys want to see, um, please leave it down in the comments below. Um, I don't really have nicknames for very much, so if you see like your favorite Pokemon in here and you really want to be nicknamed after it, just let me know. Um, and yeah, thanks guys. Uh, week 1 battles will be going up as of next week. Um, I believe we take on the Shakespeare Volpixes first, if I remember right. Um, so week 1 battles will end up be going up right away. Um, thank you guys for coming by, and have a good one. Bye.